Hey folks, Seth Liebson here. As we watch cities burn, statues being torn down, and calls to defund the police, if you haven't already, it may be time to think about personal protection. Guns Etc. has 10,200 square feet of guns, ammo, safes, and a staff that will work with you to find the best firearm for your situation. So stop by their huge store in Mesa or click on gunsetc.com and have access to over $400 million in firearms and accessories. And if you like my monologues, please subscribe to 960 The Patriots' YouTube channel. Welcome back and happy July 30th, 2020. One of you forwarded to me a story yesterday about the NBA and its youth training camps in China. The headline of the ESPN story reads, quote, ESPN investigating finds coaches at NBA China academies complained of player abuse, lack of schooling, close quote. Before I go into much detail, a few immediate things jumped out. The opening of one of the paragraphs which read, quote, the NBA ran into myriad problems by opening one of the academies in Xinjiang, close quote. Xinjiang? The story then went on to detail a little of what was going on in Xinjiang. The problem is a lot of us have been speaking about it for years. It is a modern day concentration camp of a province. What the hell is the NBA doing in China, much less Xinjiang? Oh, you and I know the answer, profit. Still I ask, because that is not a good enough answer. It is not a sufficient answer. What the hell are they doing there? Last year, the New York Times published a major series on what was going on there. Let me read just a little, but hold on because it all gets worse, much worse. Here's from last year, quote, the students booked their tickets home at the end of the semester, hoping for a relaxing break after exams and a summer of happy reunions with family in China's far west. Instead, they would be told that their parents were gone, relatives had vanished, and neighbors were missing. All of them locked up in an expanding network of detention camps built to hold Muslim ethnic minorities. The authorities in the Xinjiang region worried that the situation was a powder keg, and so they prepared. The leadership distributed a classified directive advising local officials to corner returning students as soon as they arrived and to keep them quiet. It included a chillingly bureaucratic guide for how to handle their anguished questions, beginning with the most obvious, where's my family, close quote. Where's my family? Where's my home? all gone, plowed down and under. One more part from that story, quote, the authorities in Xinjiang have detained many hundreds of thousands of Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and other Muslims in internment camps. Inmates undergo months or years of indoctrination and interrogation aimed at transforming them into secular and loyal supporters of the party, close quote. Now I say it gets worse, because one didn't need to wait until last year to read this. I've been talking about it for years, so have others. And indeed, one can perform a search to see a Time magazine headline in 2014, six years ago, quote, Islam in China, why Beijing oppresses Uyghurs, close quote. One can see a headline from Human Rights Watch from 15 years ago. It reads, quote, China, religious repression of Uyghur Muslims, close quote. PBS did a story on it that same year, 2005, with an addenda on how China imprisons more journalists than any other country in the world. China, of course, has tried to cover it up and to dress it up. And what better way than with dollars and one of America's favorite pastimes, sports, the NBA. Could there be a greater distraction from their human crimes than that? It is not the first time breads and circuses have been showered on a people or media to cover up human hum humanitarian atrocities. Those of us schooled just a little bit in the history of the modern world know well what took place in Europe in the 1940s, especially the horrid story of the Red Cross and Threisenstadt. As New Week, Newsweek wrote about it, when the International Red Cross was invited to inspect the camp in the summer of 1944, the Nazis were determined to hide from the world the fact that they were killing Jews en masse. The camp's directors forced inmates to build fake homes, shops, and gardens that would fool the delegation into thinking the camp was actually a thriving 
town. In fact, it was a Potemkin village designed for genocide, close quote. The Red Cross wrote positively of its visit to what was called a spa town. Never mind that what the Red Cross and the international world was fooled about was in reality a collection center for deportations to ghettos and killing centers in Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe. Of course, the nasty, horrible secret was that the Red Cross was not really fooled as it was looking for something to fool the rest of the world with. Not the first time that happened either. We just didn't think it would be true in the latter part of the 20th century, much less the 21st century, or that something called the National Basketball Association would be a part and take part in it. What better way to aid and assist the cover-up in China and the depredation of an entire people than to help with the propaganda of the regime by hosting and and promoting nice little basketball camps there in the heart of darkness? Reason 1001 as to why I keep saying the phrase never again is one of the great lies of the 20 and 21st centuries. But hold on, it gets worse. The first reporting on Xinjiang province took place around 2004-2005. This is precisely the same time major media and the left here in the United States started wringing their hands about and lecturing us in the United States about not engaging in Islamophobia here. Meanwhile, just as concentration camps in China for Muslims were being built. Not a peep about it. No lecturing, no wringing of hands, just cold reports here and there in abstruse human rights papers that only those of us who followed human rights in China cared about. To quote Jean Kirkpatrick, they always blame America first. But hold on, it gets worse. Because while the story about the NBA training camps is going to embarrass the NBA, They should have been embarrassed a long time ago. Let's talk about what the story now says about the NBA in China at these basketball training camps in Zhejiang. It's one thing to help prop up the Chinese government's civilizational abuse there, and that's what it is, civilizational abuse. But how about also ignoring and covering up, until just this story yesterday, abuse within those Potemkin villages by what has been covered up by the NBA until now? Quoting, quote, One American coach who worked for the NBA in China described the project as a sweat camp for athletes. At least two coaches left their positions in response to what they believed was the mistreatment of young players. Imagine you have a kid who's 13, 14 years old, and you've got a grown coach who's 40 years old hitting your coach, hitting your kid, the coach said. We're part of that. The NBA is part of that, close quote. So the NBA engages in the stage one crime of trying to cover for China's human rights abuses by portraying it as a candy land for children in, as I say, the province of the heart of darkness of abuse. And then when it appears abusers will abuse, even in the NBA run circus there, that will be covered up by the NBA as well. But hold on, it gets worse. I'm not sure if there's a single professional athletic association that is more engaged in lecturing America on on left-wing social issues, social justice issues, and how bad America is than the NBA. Just this month, we learned the NBA would paint BLM statements throughout its arenas and and stadiums and on its courts. Basketball player jerseys in the NBA now will have statements on them that read things like Black, Black Lives Matter, education reform, enough, stand up, and si se puede. The last one is about immigration reform. I have no idea what the NBA wants so far as education reform, but something tells me it's not about choice or merit pay or higher standards or even just returning to school, you know, having education, never mind reforming it. And as far as the statement stand up goes, I bet you it's not applying to something we used to call the national anthem, For that, the push and shaming is to sit down, or rather, kneel down. As for the BLM statements, I just remind, even after so many of us have pointed out the BLM website has a main goal for the movement, the the disruption of the nuclear family, their website still proudly touts that goal by stating, quote, We disrupt the Western prescribed nuclear family structure requirement by supporting each other as extended family and villages that collectively care for one another, 
especially our children, to the degree that mothers, parents, and children are comfortable, close quote. Note, no word on fathers. Just what minority families need, after all, or any of us, less family structure, less fathers. I suppose, given the Marxism of the founders of the BLM movement, and they admit to it, it's not an insult. Marxism is a description they admit to. And knowing the Karl Marx and Frederick Engels view of the family from the Communist Manifesto, where they write that the family needs to be disrupted because it is based on the profit of the bourgeois, maybe we shouldn't be surprised the NBA seeks a nexus between the BLM and a country whose practice in Zhejiang with those it doesn't like, of course, is, how did the New York Times put it? Family disappearance, with talking points on how to answer children when they ask, where's my family? Where's my home? You know well who understands this practice of Chinese communism? Those that live near it and are terrified of it, like those in Hong Kong. It should be no surprise that Hong Kong citizens have been rising up and protesting the infringements of and incursions into their sovereignty by mainland China. Nor would it be a surprise that an American with a voice like the coach of a major athletic team, say Daryl Morey, might help promote freedom and tweet support for the Hong Kong protesters. It would be an American thing to do. But you see, Daryl Morey forgot. His employer was the NBA, and they forced him never to do that again and to apologize, for it offended the Chinese. What was Maury's tweet? Here it is. Quote, fight for freedom. Stand with Hong Kong. Close quote. What did the owner of the Houston Rockets say in response? Quote, that Maury didn't speak for the team, which he said was, quote unquote, not a political organization. Not a political organization. Rockets player James Harden said, we apologize. We love China. The NBA describes Mr. Morey's comments as, quote, regrettable and acknowledged he had, quote, deeply offended many of our friends and fans in China. So I'm just going to guess that the NBA player uniforms that now have the social justice messages, especially the ones that say stand up, are also not meaning stand up with or for Hong Kong. Stand with freedom. I'll guess, too, overnight the NBA and the Rockets now are of a sudden, indeed, a political organization, at least when it comes to beating on America, so long as they're not beating on communism or communists. I don't know how to end this. I could go on and on, but it seems to me when NBA coaches like Steve Kerr say this administration, the Trump administration, is quote-unquote incapable of being authentic and quote unquote, violates peaceful protests and any number of any other slurs he and his NBA panjandrums can come up with, I might just ask them to check their dictionaries and not just their English language dictionaries, but their moral dictionaries as well. For as it turns out, the discounting of freedom, the depredation and pillaging of it, as well as of minority human beings, it ain't here. It's where you are trying to do the most business and help truly cover up crimes against humanity, which are not accidents or oversights, but government policy. All the while, trying to cover it up and dress it up here when someone from within your own organization tries to bring it to light, lest it offend the true regime of tyranny, where you want to do business. That's not appeasement of tyranny, not anymore. Not knowing what we've known for a long time, it's active support, collusion, and promotion of it. Meanwhile, what I spoke of yesterday has begun. In the Washington Post today, there's a story on Atlanta Hawks coach Lloyd Pierce, and they are capitalizing the words white and black. Recall why they are capitalizing the words white at the Washington Post, as the scholar, as the scholar we quoted yesterday put it, to remind people of their race so they can't hide behind it or be unaware of it any longer. In any event, Lloyd Pierce is quoted up front as saying how worried he is about racism in America. He says, just so you guys know, I'm not okay. I'm effed up right now, close quote. The story ends with a lecture from him that white people haven't done enough about racism in this country. This from the multi-million dollar salaried head coach of a professional team in a league that gave him a career in a country that gave him a scholarship to a prestigious college. 
Quote, not many kids of color from Eastside San Jose had the grades to go to the prestigious Catholic school, but Pierce had the game and the grades, close quote, one profile of him writes. As I said about Oprah, once upon a time we would have said, only in America. The beneficiaries of our great American ethics and work now try and claim never in America. I don't know how they do it with any sincerity or any memory whatsoever. So what to say about the NBA? We quickly run out of words and synonyms. Once upon a time, immoral, iniquitous, hypocritical, and shameful would have done it. But it's really too bad people, at least in professional athletics as I now see it, and most of journalism, just erased those words from their dictionaries, starting with shame. It's really too bad people just don't blush anymore. I'm Seth Liebson. The lines are open.